Alright, so... Back to what I was saying earlier. I wanted to... Well, I still want to write a... Top 10 movies of 2015 post, but... For some reason... Well, lately I've been busy with Helldivers and so forth. So I haven't really... Had the time to do something else. And I kind of have to be in the right mood to write something. Because, uh, well, I'm a competent writer, I'm not... I prefer to write well, or... <laughs> prefer to write in a certain state of mind, I suppose. I become an excellent writer when I'm emotionally distraught, but apart from that, because I can't really manufacture that at random. But if I'm in a relaxed state, then I'm a semi-competent movie review writer, I suppose. And game review writer, of course. Since uh, the people that write game review stuff tend to be fairly poor at writing, I'm a lot better at that than most, most people that write about games ever. But as far as movies go, there's a lot to live up to there, so... Uh, so is something where I can distinguish myself easily. And of course competence is never, absolutely never, what is most desired in capitalism, so... There's no real reason to strive for it other than personal pride. Fire paper. There. Uh, so we have to get through the sewers in 15 minutes. So, my number one movie of the year, if you didn't think, <laughs> or if it wasn't obvious already, is Mad Max, of course. Fury Road. Perhaps the best action movie of all time. Certainly the best if you just count it as an action movie. Uh, Terminator 2 is roughly as good, but it's not as good on the action front. It's basically good because it's a more interesting movie. Or And, for example, Edge of Tomorrow, which is definitely a worse movie than Fury Road, but was the best movie last year, is an extremely interesting movie. It's one that you can think about over time. And, uh, shout outs to hitboxes. The... Fear Road isn't really a movie you contemplate, it's more a movie you watch for the spectacle. Or in my case, I was depressed one day, and I went and watched Mad Max again, and it made me happy. So, I think it's it's that good of a movie to where it can redeem all uh, mental faults you might have at any given point in time, because you'll enjoy it so much. The second best movie of the year is The Revenant, of course. Uh, Starring one Leonardo DiCaprio, directed by Alejandro Inarritu. I don't know if that's how you pronounce it, but that's what I'm gonna go with. And who also directed Birdman, of course. Birdman was also my second best movie last year. So it was number two twice in a row. Uh, the Revenant is about Hugh Glass, an American frontiersman who crawls for 200 miles back to civilization after being left for dead following a savage bear molly. Vicious bear molly. And that part of the movie is pretty much 100% accurate. <laughs> Maybe not 100% accurate, but what happened is what happened. Basically, the he actually did crawl for 200 miles back to civilization. That's a really good note, by the way. Which is just totally insane, so... All the crazy stuff that happens in the movie is somewhat akin to what actually happened in real life. Hence the ease of fascination with the film. The reason why the film is so good for DiCaprio is because he doesn't have to talk. For most of it. And the problem with DiCaprio is that he... He falls into the trap many actors do where... When you're acting, you just... Kind of play the same role every damn time. <laughs> Uh, this is not the same thing as being type typecast, it's just a style of acting where 
the actor fulfills a niche. Like, oh, I need DiCaprio in this role because he'll be DiCaprio. But in the case of The Revenant, he barely talks at all, and half the time when he's talking, he's speaking a different language, so you can't really tell how good his acting is, because you don't understand what the hell he's saying. So, a language that virtually no one speaks, by the way, so, like, it's not like it would be different. I'm sure if he spoke Spanish, then uh, a very large percentage of the world's population could understand him, and that might impact your uh, impression of the film differently, but... Since he's speaking a Native American language that uh, probably like a few thousand people in the world speak, then basically no one's going to understand him, so that's what makes it work. So all of his acting is physical throughout the film, and DiCaprio's a very good physical actor. He's not the best at uh, speaking roles, he's perfectly competent. Not to disparage DiCaprio, he's just sort of middle of the pack as far as good actors go. But if you just give him a physical role, then he'll do quite well in it. His, uh... In The Aviator, he's also very good in that movie. Thanks in large part to the physical contributions that the role required. Now there are actors that are good at both, like, uh, young Robert De Niro is probably the best actor of all time. And of course old Robert De Niro is well, he's recovering lately, but for a long time he was very mediocre, but when he was young, he was pretty much unparalleled. Um, and he had uh, the movie Raging Bull, he was 80 pounds overweight or something between, <laughs> between being a boxer and then becoming a fat guy. And he actually ate a shitload of food so he could do that. I know that was probably incredibly unhealthy for him, but... We have to admire the contribution to the craft. Uh, Christian Bale is another actor who does that a lot, but Christian Bale is actually a very good actor. His his fault or his issue is being typecast, like always being the stern lawman figure. When he's not that, he's fucking amazing, as we might have seen in American Psycho or The Fighter. I don't know why this guy keeps slapping. But enough of that slapping. Um, what else was I gonna say? So anyway, The Revenant, well deserving of Best Picture as well as Best Actor. Uh, Mad Max is almost certainly gonna win Best Director, by the way. Uh, just because George Miller is old, that's a stupid reason to get win an Oscar, but he probably deserves it. So whatever, and it's certainly the best movie of the year. So who cares? It's sometimes stuff happens for dumb reasons, but the right thing has happened anyway. Like, Frank Thomas elected on the first ballot to the Hall of Fame because he didn't use steroids, that's why he got elected. But he probably still deserved it anyway, if he, lived, if he played in a different era, those numbers are insane. So, it's okay. <laughs> he probably would have been like a second or third ballot if the steroid issue was not a thing. But since it was, that propelled him into the spotlight, and bam. First ballot Hall of Famer, my favorite player of all time, Mr. Frank Thomas. Well done, sir. There's a really funny uh, clip of Frank Thomas just completely obliterating the Mets. <laughs> Last year's like, the Mets didn't do anything that they should feel bad about, except that they threw away the World Series and played terribly. <laughs> Or something like that. That's like incredible backhandedness. Reminds me of myself. Well done, Frank Thomas. Alright, I gotta go to the right side of the bridge here. So I have managed to be talked to, just not about Bloodborne. Uh, okay, what's the third best movie of the year? It is Mr. Holmes. Mr. Holmes is the. Um, Sherlock Holmes movie, as you might imagine, with Ian McKellen that came out this year. It's basically about an aging, near-retirement Holmes, and him sort of coping with aging and dying, death as a concept, I suppose. Though he doesn't die in the course of the movie, spoilers. Um, it's a PG movie, though, and it's a PG movie that's intelligent and engaging. 
which is a very rare thing. So it's uh, it's basically a happy movie, a happy movie that can still please you mentally, as it were. <laughs> I do not have the music box, so we're just going to have to deal with guests going without it. And we'll continue movie talk after Gascon. We'll go through all ten movies. <laughs> <laughs> 